It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots, and uh, this week's show is sponsored by who, Schultzy? Man, Squarespace. Okay, turn your dream into a reality of Squarespace. Squarespace makes it easier than ever to launch a passion project, whether you're showcasing your work or selling products of any kind with beautiful templates and the ability to customize just about anything. You can easily make a beautiful website yourself, and if you do get stuck, Squarespace's 24-7 award-winning customer support is there to help. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain let's get the show started it's time for pussies to talk uh, all right boy this pussy well, talk english spanish and french boy this pussy time. talk your road dialects and yen boy this pussy talk bentley's robbers and bins boy this pussy talk fly private islands the m boy this pussy talk hey hey uh, boy, pussy talk uh, hey boy this pussy talk hey hey boy this pussy talk hey hey yo you killed that bro Hey, man, city girls out of this bitch. You know what hey, I'm saying? Man. I always said the testament to a great female rap song is mm-hmm. if dudes will sing it even though it's about doing things to dudes. I don't think it matters when it's me. <laughs> okay, go. Uh, only because, like, you know, according to, according to, the, according to I the, think me and every other listener right now have our eyes a little squinted, like, keep no, going. It's true. It's true. You know, according, according to the internet, I'm gay. So it don't matter. Like, it don't count when I sing a girl song. They, they expect me to be saying, boy, this pussy make boobies wetter than a whale. They expect me to be saying that. <laughs> <A> whale. <laughs> they expect me to be saying that. That's nothing. Yo, That's but nothing. okay, maybe not you, but do you remember that song, Shoop by Salt and Pepper? Shoop, 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 Yeah, I remember right. Shoop. Let me get you back to the subject. Shoop ain't the one, though. <laughs> shoop is still the same. Just because you don't know it. No, let me get it back to the subject. That no <laughs> sex. They can get sex. hot, make you work up a sweat when you shoot to the loo, my darling. Ooh, darling. Yeah, shoot was cool. Yeah, if like you don't shoot. know the words, it's all good, bro. You know? I fuck, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I wasn't really into salt. Salt and pepper was dope. Um, They were really dope. My sister loved salt and pepper. Right. Their hooks, their hooks were amazing. You right. can't forget their hooks. You know, push it. Push it real good. Oh, what a man, what a man, what a man, what a man. You can't forget they hooks. But it's lyrics I remember. Hey, yo, 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 baby, poppy. Ooh, come here. Here I go. Here I go. Here I go again. Girls, what's my weakness? Man. Okay, now chill it, chill it. Mind my Mind business. Mind my business. Some, some dudes came around and I couldn't believe this. I swear. I swear. <laughs> Son, yo, you just started being gay. You a new gay, I thought, bro. I started to say something gay there. Shit forever, dog. I started to say something there. I swear, I swear. My something niece, there. my witness. The brother oh, yeah, had my, it going. He was something kind of uh, wicked, 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 wicked. Past the digits, right? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, man. I know this pussy talk. Lewis, Poochie, YSL. Okay. <laughs> his, pussy, his pussy be choosing. All right. What does that mean, Taylor? Go with your old uncle. What does it mean when a pussy be choosing? When it be cruising? Choosing. Choosing. Oh, cruising. Choosing. I know what that means. That means autopilot. That means you ain't showering in weeks. At Yo. least days. No, it doesn't. <laughs> pussy. You got some shit in your teeth now, too, because uh-huh. you got some salad in your teeth. You got a whole oh. fucking garden in your teeth right now. Yeah. But anyway, uh, Andrew, how was your week? <laughs> we'll talk. Sorry, go. My bad. How, how was your week? Damn rabbit was scurrying around in her teeth. From the middle of the That's disgusting. To me. Grow up. I'm only saying that because she was making fun of me because I had a booger hanging out of my nose during the entire <laughs> fucking Squarespace read in the beginning of the episode. She let me read the whole goddamn ad. And then at the end of it, she's like, oh, you should probably take that gigantic booger out of your fucking nose. <laughs> Grow up, Taylor. <laughs> Grow up. Oh my All right. Okay. Um, so you're really feeling this WAP? Oh, so you want to get right to it? Positively brilliant? What a Wait, fucking idiot. What? Wait, can I tell you what happened? Oh, no. You were about to school Charlemagne on something. Well, I don't remember the question you just asked. The pussy, what does choosing pussy... Taylor, we off you, Taylor. They don't even like hearing you talk. I just was trying <sighs> no, to be I nice. Really but they, say, no, I can't tell you. No, they really don't like hearing you talk, I don't I'm being care. honest. Can I tell they you said they don't know why Andrew gave you a microphone. 
Okay. Technically, it was already there. She just took it. I just <laughs> oh, got you, got you, got you, got you. Okay. okay. <laughs> can, I, can I tell you what happened to me over the weekend real quick? What happened to you over the weekend, Taylor? So... I um, you had that bad. Be good. Did you have that? Hey, what's up? Because this is like this is like starting. Like this is <laughs> this, you're not even coming off the bitch this podcast. Yes. It's like you in the starting five. Uh huh. It's not even five minutes in, and you saying that you got a story. This story better be fire. We done some- talked about pussy. We done talked about goddamn salt and pepper. This better be fire. It has Taylor. to do with you know girls. You know, just being kind of rude to guys. So I was in the car mm-hmm. and I'm driving to my friend's house. I'm at a stoplight. Mm-hmm. This guy comes up to me and was like, yo, my, my windows are up. He's like, yo, what's up? So I shoo him away, whatever. He's still trying to talk. He taps on my window. Uh. So I decided to give him a dollar. Like, is this what you wanted? Act like he was oh, homeless. Oh, shit. Mind you, he was with his friends and they just kind of busted on him. And he kind of tried to cuss me out, but the light turned green. So you you rejected him by calling him homeless? Yeah, he was really upset about it. And that. now, Sharla, listen, what do we... Hold on, hold on. <laughs> what do we rate stopping the whole podcast to share that story? What oh, I thought y'all would enjoy show, that. Show, show, show. And right before, right before she cut you off, Shoats, you asked me what did I think about WAP. So we're about to talk about wet-ass pussy, and here comes Taylor talking about homeless people. <laughs> Yo, I'm gonna be honest with you. That's Mike. That's the, I think the mic needs to get turned off for the rest. Do you think? <laughs> I really do. I really do. I'm not even gonna lie to you. I thought you would have liked that story. I thought it was clever, and I thought it was a good like uh, slap back or punch back, if you will, comeback. Yeah. I liked no, it. It no, was good. The punchline is so? there. No, the setup was horrible. The setup wasn't I'm not good. A comedian Build it out. Build it out, Schultz. Build I, it out. Build it I out. I think I would have. I would have brought you into the world with WAP. Boom. Boom. We're listening to WAP. We're in the car. You know what I mean? You and your girls okay. are all wapped up. The seats are fucking soaked. Just sliding <laughs> off of them. You know what I mean? Set the scenario. You know what I mean? Like, literally, you're trying to drive and you're, you know, you're falling. You're slipping and sliding. All over the place. Slipping and sliding, right? So, a girl, so a dude pulls up. You know what I'm saying? No, a dude, no, a dude pulls up and a dude can smell it. He's like, yo, y'all smell WAP? I smell some WAP. I smell some WAP. I smell some some wet. You hit a speed bump, some wet shot out the window, hit a homeless guy oh, on the side yo, of the face. They go to wet right there. <laughs> right there. Yo, you wipe it off your face. You wipe it off your face. That's you driving wet? behind the car. Blowing behind, you blowing the horn. Bam, 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 wah, bam. Wah, no, no. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. <laughs> <laughs> you blowing the horn. She pulls over. Uh huh. The dollar was soaking wet, right, Taylor? The dollar was soaking wet because yes. you brought it out of your other purse. I brought it out. It was in my mic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was in my back pocket. Okay. okay. Oh, okay. you got so- a fanny pack on. You got a fanny pack on. <laughs> okay. Because fanny pack's closer to the whack. Okay. okay. All right. So That's then what it was. You hand, the, you hand the moist dollar. Yep. You hand the moist dollar to the dude, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. What happens next? He got offended. He got offended. Yeah. But now we got to punch this joke up. Yeah, because see, right now, the only joke that would make sense is he got offended because the dollar had a smell to it. <laughs> mm. You don't, you don't so want that. Yo, man. imagine the dollar smelled like George Washington. <laughs> I don't know if I want to do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't see. You can't be like that, Taylor. You the one who Listen, wanted to get in the we're game. Close. We're close. We're almost done. Not- we're <laughs> almost at the end. We just, we just need a final punch. So you, you wanted to dollar. start. You gave him the dollar, right? Yeah. You give him the dollar. He's offended. Now he has to say something to you. He rings out the dollar. Oh, he rings out the wheel. Yeah, now we're talking. He now the wheels out, are turning, right? Taylor. Now he the gears are the turning. Whap. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he, <laughs> he rings out the wrap. Now, now, how crazy do we want to get with this? <laughs> <laughs> does, does, go crazy go all crazy I mean the craziest would be like he rings out the whap into his own hand and then starts beating off right in front of you whoa whoa whoa, whoa. Yes. alright let's bring it back let's bring it back let's bring it back let's bring it, let's bring it back guys can listen guys no. cannot talk like that Andrew only no. women but what if he was like <laughs> guys can't talk like that only women can what leave that to like, leave that to Cardi and Megan the Stallion okay oh my God. what if he was like this meal need right. a little assault and pepper <laughs> listen jt from the city girls not jt young miami one of them say playing with me niggas like playing with my pussy playing with you niggas like playing with my pussy uh-huh 
I don't even know what that means. <laughs> but it sounds amazing. <laughs> I asked him what it meant. I don't think I don't think I recall. I don't. I didn't get it. You know, you should have asked them what the oh. definition of broke means for them. Like what they said, what broke is? Oh, you mean like what's the number? Yeah. Oh, okay. I but wait a minute, it. we're not done with it. What is our out, Charlotte? We need an out for this. What is our punch out? He's got to say something to her, then she has to have one more line, and then we're out. So he's got to say something to set her up to bury him. Maybe we should just turn this into a dramedy, bro. Oh, we want to go real, you want to go maybe, like sad with it? Maybe, that? maybe. What were we thinking? He rings, he rings the dollar rings bill out, the dollar. and then he says to her, like, yo, you know, truthfully, um, I was just trying to get some money because I'm rushing to the hospital and I'm about to run out of gas. You know what I'm saying? My child is, you know, in the hospital right now and I'm trying to get there cause she's in the ER, but I, I might run out of gas. So, you know, I know you're trying to be funny with this dollar, but that's kind of disrespectful. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and then what you would have did Taylor, what you would have did then seriously, what would you, what you would have done if you would have told you his child is in the hospital, he's rushing to get to her. His child has been in an accident. He's low on gas. He's about to run out of gas. What you would have done then? You could use my dollar to, you could use wow. the drip that you use from the dollar. Hold on. And make it, and she wow. could drink the water from it. You're going to give your... Oh, not the child. Oh, it was a child. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. 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 i am sorry i am sorry i am sorry Exactly. Because he's trying to get there. He's he's making a living so he could pay for them hospital bills. Okay, so boom. The guy goes, damn, all you got is a dollar. And then somebody in the car goes, because we all poor. Whap. (laughs) That ain't it? I don't know. I don't know if that That was it. it. I'll be honest with you. I I, I I, I don't know. Usually I'm on board, bro. But that that that, that, one, that, that wasn't one. it. That wasn't it. Nah, you okay. know. Listen, shooters got to shoot, bro. You know what shooters got to shoot. I must. We, we average thirty a game, okay? Son, we are proven. All right, we Taylor to the bench. To the bench. <laughs> to the bench. Garbage now, minutes. Positively brilliant. What a fucking idiot. All, All right, Andrew. I mean, po- positively brilliant. Got to be WAP, right? Uh, everybody's talking about it. We love it when girls talk about sex. And the hotter the girls are, the more we love it when they talk about sex. Simple as that. Whether it's a podcast, whether it's a rap song, whatever you got to yeah. do. If you're a hot chick, if you want to talk about fucking, you can be a millionaire. If you're a hot chick willing to talk about fucking and you are not a millionaire, something is wrong with you. Simple as that. I, um, <laughs> I, I, I think I like WAP. Because I like WAP for all the reasons I like anything. And for the reasons I've always loved something. Mm-hmm. I love things that are polarizing. I love things that people love. And I love people. I love things that people equally hate. Yo, who hates this, yo? Um, the guys that people don't that pe- have. People that make a living off writing think pieces with no thought. Uh. The, 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 the woke crowd that's so woke that they need to get some sleep because they so goddamn tired. <laughs> Son, okay, I, I think I got because <laughs> because here's my thing: if you're a certain age, like if you're like I'm 42, yeah, if you're over the age of 40 and you're upset at WAP, you're really a hypocrite. Because WAP to me is very tame, based off all the music that I grew up on and the music I listened to. Whether it was Little Kim saying, "I used to be scared of the dick, now I throw lips to the shit, handle it like a real bitch," had the hunt touch and a jack man, and then something something take it in the butt. Whoa! What, what? That's what she said. Exactly. So why is WAP? Kaya, my neck, my back, lick exactly. my pussy and my ass crack? Yeah, that's crazy. What Trina the fuck is WAP? Too. WAP is t- WAP, and I like WAP, but WAP is tame compared to those records. Put me. it in your mouth. Yeah. Wow. Oh, that's you me, Megan and Cardi are doing what they're supposed to do. They're twenty something years old. Those are the records that you should be making at twenty. Every time I'm on the gram, I see women with their tongue out in the mirror. You know, showing they shape, having a good time, twerking. They just doing it on a million dollar level. What's the problem? Tell me the pushback. I don't understand any of the pushback. I can't even they fathom. They're saying this climate is not appropriate. Why? What about this climate? Is it not appropriate? I don't know. People ain't getting their dick no, sucked. No, I climate? guess they assume. Be- <laughs> this seems like the, you're sheltered in place. You might as well get your dick sucked. And if your girl doesn't way. do it right, if she listens to WAP, when Cardi B said, "Hit the dangly thing in my throat," you know that part of the song? Yeah. Yeah, all I thought about was like, damn, she don't got her tonsils removed. 
That's not a tonsil. <laughs> it's not a tonsil. <laughs> That's a dangly thing in your throat. No, tonsils are the shits back here. The oh, dangly no, little speed bag I shit. I always thought that was. <laughs> you don't just snip that off, dude. <laughs> I that, didn't know. I thought that was tonsils. No, that's the clit. That's where they call that tonsils. That's the clit. A lot of women don't realize this. <laughs> that their clit is actually that dangly thing back there. That's how women achieve orgasm. If you're listening right now, I'll, as a biologist, 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 neurologist, gynecologist, as a gynecologist, oh my gynecologist. God, also yo. that too. I'm all of them. <laughs> Honestly, the way the best way women can achieve orgasm is if the penis hits the dangly thing in the back of the throat, like Cardi B says. That is I mean, a it fact. might be, it might be something to that because. When Cardi said it, I saw a bunch of women agreeing. Th- that's it. Preach. And, 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 I'm, and I'm not going to lie. In my day, and by my day, I, you know, I'm not going to put that out there. All I'm going to say is well, well, I've, hey seen, now, I've seen hey women now. really enjoy that. Hey, now, what do you mean your day? I've seen women. I've seen women really enjoy that. I've seen women. God damn it. <laughs> I've seen women take the shit. Yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like. Yeah, Do they head son, on it? You son, know what I'm saying? Son, like, son, to make sure. Son, son, that, that son, son, son you talk for a living. You can find words to describe that. You did not hey, have to hey, act that hey, shit man, out, bro. Son, that was hey, why, That made me hey, feel uncomfortable. No. That hey, made me feel uncomfortable, we, bro. Sometimes we got to just get to it, shows. Here I go. Here I go. Here, here I, I go, go again. again girls, what's <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sometimes you just got to get fucking to it. But I've seen women do that. I've seen women make sure that the penis absolutely hits the dangly thing in the back of their throat is what I'm here to say. Yo, I yes, they do that. People, I um I actually I actually Whoa, whoa, whoa. Not, I just heard something. What? She said women <laughs> pretend. You mean like when they gag, they pretend? If the guy has a small dick, we're going to make them feel better by oh, I'm sorry. If the guy has a small dick, they're going to make them feel better by acting like they're gagging on it when it they're not. Why? Well, that is That's absolutely funny. horrifying to hear. <laughs> Hold on. Here I was. Here I was this whole time thinking I'm earning these hot, but in reality, in reality, you're saying that girls could be faking no. the gags. Yeah. Charlamagne, mean, did you know this? I know that you're single, but back in your ho days. Uh, um, no, because well, yeah, I didn't know that. I knew that. Uh, but the the thing that makes men better is when women just tell us the truth. But. I guess with dick size, there's no need to tell me the truth because there's yeah, nothing yeah, I can yeah, do yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cut out that true shit with dick size. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing I can do about it. You know what I'm saying? But guys know. I know. Yeah, I know, guys. I want to be I know, with satisfactory dick. I don't need I've, that. I need I've, to go. Listen, I've heard stories of guys who are afraid to get head because their penises are so small. That's a true fact. Afraid no, to get right, head because their right, penises right. are so small, and that's so, yeah. and they're so good at head because they don't want to show off their dick. Oh, I believe that about every guy that says he loves eating pussy, <laughs> is that they don't have big dicks. That's what? not true. That's not true. Yes, it's like no, it's nice, dude. Guys who are good at shooting usually aren't good at dribbling because you don't I need to. I am a good vagina eater. I think. I think you're not. I think you're but not. I've actually worked <laughs> at it. I've worked at it. I've read books on it. The ultimate kiss. I've studied this thing. You know, I really do know how to give good congolingus. And um, I have a pretty decent size penis. Seven <laughs> inches, three fourth, eight when it's warm out. You know, a few inches of girth. Now, here's the thing. Really Did you though. start learning how to eat pussy after that? Uh, after what happened with uh, your girl and like she hooked up with that guy with a bigger dick remember she told you his dick was bigger were you like I, were you I, like you do I have to out. compensate do I have to compensate now with my tongue because um, she got that hammer I think that might have been around the same time but actually I started <laughs> learning how to eat it well because a young lady told me I was trash at it like straight up she told me I was trash at it so that's what made me Go out there and become better at the Kungalingus game. Mm-hmm. And by the way, I hope that there's nobody listening to this podcast saying, oh, my God, they're being so explicit today. Blame the WAP. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion have raised the bar. <laughs> Sexually explicit talk is back at least for the week. I'm okay? with you. I'm with you in that regard. And I think it was needed. I think it was yeah. needed, bro. It's and much I don't needed. Even- I don't even understand why people are really upset about this record because it's just a song. It's entertainment. 
Like, if you don't like it, simply turn the goddamn radio off. You don't have to go listen to it on Tidal or Apple or Spotify. There's so much other Charlotte, music out there. What are people upset? What are people upset about what's going to happen, right? I understand, I, I understand back in the day, like, if you listen to this, like, satanic rock music, you're worried that they were going to go, like, shoot up a fucking school or, like, shoot up a yeah. mall. Or if you're listening to some super dark shit, you're going to do some horrible thing. You're going to commit suicide, whatever. The worst case scenario, if you listen to WAP, is you suck dick better. That's the worst thing that comes from this song. No? Uh, are you are you try to? Or are you, you try. start going to the are you start going to the doctor because you know you realize you don't have that WAP and you want to know why you have this a uh, vaginal dryness. So you think maybe it's a lot of people with that dap? You think it's a lot of dry I, I, ass bro, pussies, a lot of desert bro, ass pussies out there I, complaining about this song because they know what they're working with? Bro, I'm not one to start any internet conspiracy theories, mm. but I think that a lot of people Vaginal dryness is, um, that's just my theory. Vaginal dryness is common in what? What is it a common symptom of? Stop. Oh, God. No, what? Uh, Mark, hey, hey, mark that, Dwayne. Yes. <laughs> yes. Jesus Christ. All right. Vaginal. <laughs> Matter of fact, we could just bleep that because I don't think they'll figure it out. I don't think they'll figure it. That's, a good, that's a good mystery one. All right. Vaginal dryness is a common symptom of what? Stress. I don't know. Old age? Menopause. Boom. We're getting oh! somewhere. Uh, uh, menopause. Oh! Old age. Older women sitting back watching Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion. Oh! Get it, get it, get it in. And they get a little jealous and a little envious. So they get online and under a fake page and throw out those fake think pieces about how they're the worst thing to ever happen. To music and how you know they're going to be what causes little young girls to be whores and thoughts and this and that. You know what causes little young girls to be whores and thoughts when their dads aren't around. <laughs> Boom. Okay, or when That's they're it. badly influenced by their mothers because they uh, see that behavior from their mother. Uh, All right, or their friends. Okay, you, you, can, you can you can pretty much let your kids watch anything if you're the one instilling the proper values inside of them already yo you saw that post duval put up no nah, what do you put oh so fire it doesn't exactly relate to this but i think it does but it's uh it life is about perspective you know kind of like uh continues that conversation we had last week but it's yes. basically like so there's two twins right and they have this alcoholic father one goes on oh i saw that i did see that right one of Go the ahead, twins one of the twins goes on to be an alcoholic because he saw his father the other twin goes on to never drink alcohol why because he saw his father Life is about perspective, right? Always. So you could see something your parents are doing and go, wow, that's normalized. I'm going to do it. Or you could see something your parents are doing and go, wow, I would never do that. You could do the exact same thing with a WAP video. You could do the exact same thing with fucking everything. Stop acting like people are like such, are these like, um, they're not dogs, right? You can't just go sit and then people sit down. Yes, they're influenced. Don't get me wrong. And you have to be concerned with your influence. I just don't think any of the influence here is that bad. Suck dick Influ better. Influence to do what, though? Because here's the thing. Megan and Cardi aren't in that video encouraging anybody to do anything. It's just an entertaining video. Right. You watch it and you laugh. What you going to do? Norman these dances? You probably do that. What you going to do? Try to do a split like Megan and Cardi? Yeah, you'll probably do that. You know what I mean? Would you want to run around a nice little fun house? Yeah, you probably do that. Have you walked down the hall like Kylie to open up a door? Yeah, you probably do that. But what is that video encouraging you to do? Hit like, why do we think that you're going to watch that video mm -hmm. and immediately, immediately want to go hit the block and sell some pussy? Because here's the truth to the matter. Mm -hmm. I love the City Girls. City Girls lyrics are way filthier than that. Really? City Girls lyrics encourage you to do way more than whatever Megan and Cardi are talking about in the WAP video. But you know why y'all not attacking the City Girls? Because the City Girls aren't as popular right now. Yes. Now, give this, now, now, now the City Girls going to hit. Don't get me wrong. If it wasn't the pandemic, coronavirus, that album would be booming all throughout the clubs everywhere right now everybody would be on that album but being that they not as popping as cardi and megan you know you can't get no clout off talking about them Ooh. you know you you know you can't get no clout off saying you don't like wop ain't nobody Ooh. gonna retweet you talking bad about wop megan even i mean not talk about it about the city girls right now they will about wop though Megan even said he goes, she goes, hello, dudes was will scream slob on my knob word for word and cry about wop by a little boy it's the truth, though. <laughs> Slob on my knob. Like corn in the cop. Check it with me. And do your job. Come on, man. 
put it in your mouth by Akinelli, all of that stuff. I think the I think the song is brilliant. I think the video is brilliant because it's been damn near what five six days and we still talking about it. Mm. And anything anything that leads to a bigger cultural conversation, which it did. Because it led to this whole conversation about music and the influence of music on young adults and people. And, you know, th that's th those are good conversations. I'm not mad at it. Uh, I think that's what a great piece of art is supposed to do. Mm. God bless. What else did you see this week, shows that you thought was uh, positively brilliant? Honestly. Or, or, or made you say, what a fucking idiot. Oh, um... I don't know which. I mean, do you think Kamala is going to be the deep dive? Like, where where do we get in on that? Because I mean, it could be. go ahead. We can. I just think it's so fun. You know what I think? What a fucking idiot is. Um, okay. There's this. Uh, it's all the Democrats, like the super left wing, super left Democrats, not the moderates that are probably very happy with these choices, but the super left. It's going to be so funny to see them all start to like justify Biden and Kamala, two people that they were vehemently against within the Democratic Party because they were like establishment politicians. It is hilarious to, to see them all start to fold back into the, oh, this is a perfect opportunity. This is great. You know, there's that tweet going around. And I can't verify it, but like Sean King back in, I think, 2018 was like, two people I that, cannot that get accurate. behind. That's accurate. That's he, accurate. He literally goes, two people I cannot get behind are. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, and then literally yesterday tweets out, oh, Kamala Harris, we got to get behind her, a black woman in the Oval Office, and da-da-da-da. Come on, bro. Well, you know, um, I'm a person that's been on record supporting Kamala Harris. Mm -hmm. um, I like Kamala Harris. Uh, I would tell, and, and, and like I've always said, the, I would tell people to do their research on Kamala Harris because what, what turned me on to Kamala Harris was back in 2015 when I started paying attention to the progressive stuff that I heard she was doing, you know, as a prosecutor and mm. in particular, the back on track program, back on track program. It, it, it took nonviolent offenders uh, on a path to like new jobs and helped them rebuild within their communities. And even her stance on weed. That's why I never understood when Tulsi Gabbard came at her the way that she did, because it was always kind of widely known that Kamala was a supporter of like marijuana. Like she had weed cases that she would routinely reduce to misdemeanors and weed possession cases weren't even on her dockets. Like she wouldn't even charge folks for that. So I, it's it's weird to me. It's, it's actually a great um, opinion piece that was written yesterday by a public defender in San Francisco. Her name is Nikki Solis. And she spoke on Kamala being the most progressive D.A. in California. And what was so interesting about that article, she said, I thought let me see if I can find this. I can read it. Again, I wish I knew more about Kamala. I just know that there have been people who are incredibly critical of her. And she's a uh, prosecutor. Right, oh, this is what she said. Nikki said, I grappled with this idea of defending a former prosecutor for a long time, but I have to say what I feel is right. The record just to set the record straight on Harris. And the headline of the article is public defender. I worked with Kamala Harris. She was the most progressive DA in California. And she said that, yo, they, they didn't see eye to eye on a lot of things. But she said, for the most part, she was a progressive prosecutor. I think, and again, I need to look into Kamala more. I'm sure there's plenty to be critical of, but I'm sure there's plenty to be supportive of. And I think it's actually a smart choice because they're going after the moderates. The extreme left <laughs> is never voting Trump. They're either not going to vote or they're going to vote Democrat because that's what they do. They're already locked in their mm -hmm. ways. Everybody is fighting for the people in the middle. And people in the middle who are looking at rioting in cities and going, oh, my God, I don't want any of that. I own a home. I don't want anybody to throw you know, bottles at my windows. People who look at the kind of unrest that you see happening right now, regardless of how they feel about race or anything else, they do want, as Trump often says, law and order. And who better to deliver law and order to those people in the middle than a fucking prosecutor? That Here's makes thing, people though. comfortable, man. You know, Trump keeps talking about the suburbs and the the boogeyman, the the the, the, the dog whistles he's throwing out, like, oh, Black Lives Matter is gonna come to your house, yada yada yada. Let me tell you something. I want to tell all you motherfuckers something. When you got forty to fifty million people unemployed in these streets, they gonna come. You too. living in these suburbs behind these gated communities, you better go Google Tupac from the '90s when Tupac was talking about how when you got this country, 
that isn't taking care of its people and you got the wealth gap so extreme and you got these people at the bottom and these people at the top, but the people at the bottom can see what the people at the top are eating. At first, it's going to start with knock, knock, knock. Hey, we're hungry. Could you please let us in? They singing a song. Next thing you know, it's going to be knock, knock, knock. Yo, man, we fucking hungry. Could you please let us in? Next thing you know, it's going to be kicking down the door, coming through blasting because y'all got all this motherfucking food and y'all ain't sharing that shit. So America, this ain't got nothing to do with race. This got to do with money. If you think for one second that Black Lives Matter protesters walking across your lawn is the problem, wait until fucking in a, f- in a few weeks when you start seeing motherfuckers jumping your gates because they know that's where the motherfucking money and the food at. And who better to tell Black Lives Matter pro- protesters specifically to not go and break into gates or break into those communities? It ain't going to be just Black Lives Matter, though. Wait, 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 I'm just saying, let's say it is. Let's say it is. No, you, let's not say it. Is. You just let's said it. it. I'm going off your I, no, I said, po- I, I said poor people. I said 40 you million said unemployed Black Lives people. Matter. I'm going off of I your didn't. hypothetical. I said 40 million. Well, if I did, I was wrong, but I said 40 million unemployed people. I said, said I actually said it's not about race. I said it's about poor and rich. Right. And you're going to have poor people jumping the gates of these communities right. to get into these motherfucking communities. Right. By the way, I live in one of those communities. <laughs> right. No, I know. I, okay. I, the, the point I'm making has nothing to do with race uh, uh-huh. in terms of the protest. What I'm saying is, let's say you did need somebody to condemn the Black Lives Matter protest. Now, I'm not saying that's the right thing to do. I'm saying, let's say if you're part of the government, you're part of the establishment politicians, and you need someone to condemn it. You can't have Joe Biden, the author of the crime bill, the guy who's got sketchy racial past, be the one to condemn it. But you know what you might want to do? You might want to have that prosecutor, prosecutor who is a black woman condemn it because she's, she's going to get though. way less smoke and she's going to make that's, way more people feel comfortable. Yeah, what but do she's you not, mean? though. That's actually what made, that's actually what was one of the... We'll see. Really imp- imp- no, that was one of the really impressive things when everything was going on. Senator Harris was on the front lines really talking people through these protests, really talking about why these people are in the streets, why these people are out there doing what they're doing. She was doing a masterful job at that, actually. Like, I, the best thing that happened to Senator Harris was she dropped out of the presidential race. Because it's like from then, it's like her star just rose. That's when Maya Rudolph started spoofing her on SNL. Right. And then these protests and everything started happening. George Floyd started happening. And she started getting out front. on, on uh, She was the only person, Let's- I said this on the podcast, she was the only person who answered the defunding the police question perfectly what she and, said? Didn't let, and didn't let Megan on the view catch her up. They asked her, does she believe in defunding the police? And she said, well, I absolutely believe in taking resources from these bloated police budgets and putting them back in the communities. And then Megan goes, but do you believe, believe in defunding the police? And she goes, well, Megan, what does defunding the police mean to you? <laughs> cause I just, cause I just, you just asked me and I answered cause she's smart enough to know not to fall for that th- those words. The fucking right. police has become a trigger. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Some gotcha. It's like a, it's like a, a gotcha. It's like oh, she really wants to abolish the police gotcha and get rid of journalism, police. Journalism for sure. She w- She answered that question the best out of everybody that week. I actually said that on every so program that I was on. Here's a question, right? I think Biden. I think we all agree Biden is a corpse. Right. There's no reason that he should be running. It's absolutely pathetic. It's sad. I'm not voting for Joe Biden. It is sad. Yes, exactly. I'm voting for Senator Kamala Harris. Exactly. And it's sad that the Democrats have even propped him up this long and they are thanking their lucky stars that Corona has happened so that he doesn't have to do any of these public speaking events or he doesn't have to debate Trump. They're they're so lucky that this has happened and they'll probably won't extend this as far as it possibly can go as close as it possibly can be for the election to protect him. But when we're voting for the president, we really are voting for Kamala because I think they give Biden a year in there. I think they give him a year and then he goes, honestly, I'm tired. It's hard for me. I'm too old for this. Kamala's going to take over. I, I mean, I think he's I, out of there in a year. So is Kamala, are you ready to vote for Kamala as your president? I think that's the question you have to ask. Fuck yeah. Okay. I think Senator Harris should be on the top of the ticket now. I thought that when she ran in the primaries. I mean, I, I was asked, like you can Google it. I was asked. On like CBS or something, they asked me like if I had to vote right now, who would, you vote who would I vote for? I said Senator Kamala Harris, and I didn't know that was an endorsement. You know, I just thought, I just asked they asked me if I had to vote right now, right. who would I vote for? And I said her. But yes, I think she's absolutely ready to, to run day one, and that would be another smart thing for Joe Biden to do. It would be smart to show us what your shadow cabinet might look like. 
You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Re- reveal to us who else is going to be around you. Because I highly doubt you would just go see a Hawkeye movie just starring Hawkeye. I might. Because I love the Marvel characters. But the Democrats don't have that kind of cachet with me. <laughs> but if you show me a Hawkeye movie and then you show me like, well, Captain America's in this too. Right. You know what I'm saying? Or uh, 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 like Panther's in this too. Just, even if it's just in the trailer for a second, I might go check it out. Right. That, that, that's all I'm saying. But um, yeah, I mean, listen, Senator Harris to me is like, is, is, is kind of like the Cardi and May video and song. Okay. Polarizing, baby. And I said this. I said the reason she would be the best choice is because there's nobody else he could put on his ticket that would even move the needle. Bro, I don't care if they love you or hate you. Are they talking about you? Are, cre- are you creating some type of energy? Do they have to pay attention to you? Right. That's what Senator Harris brings to the ticket as far as marketing and promotion. Let's not act like it's not a goddamn part. And Andrew, you know just as well as I do, when you're promoting something, you got to put something on the motherfucking flyer. You got to put, put something on the motherfucking bill that people want to see. Mm. Okay? Are you, are, are you going to put seats in the stands with this motherfucking ticket? Right. Yes, you will. Right. A- any, everybody else? I don't know. I, can't, I don't know anybody else that might have did it for him in this way. Yeah. I don't know. But I would also encourage people... Go do your own research on Senator Harris. I need to. I need to look into That's her. All. I really don't know that much. That's all. Yeah. That's all. Don't listen to don't listen to the, the Twitter. Don't listen to Instagram. Don't listen to YouTube. Don't listen to Trump supporters. Go do your own research. It's so much it's so much stuff Yo, on there why about the her fuck? and her record. Sorry. Why are we even allowing Joe Biden to run for president? Why is everybody okay with that? Like that is mind boggling to me. We had Trump run for president. I felt that way about He's Trump. Not, bro. He doesn't have <laughs> cognitive decline. Like I yeah, literally would rather. I would rather. Let me let me really get this right. Let me slice this thin here. I would rather a person who was sane and had their their wherewithal, whatever that term is, than a person who I disagree with on a lot of viewpoints than a person who didn't have their brain. I think that Trump 100%. doesn't have cognitive decline, but he don't have cognitive anything when it comes to being a president. Yeah. That's I, my only thing. I would he has still, no experience whatsoever. But think about it. And like, it shows. Think about this. Who would you rather watch your kid, right? Someone who you disagreed with politically on things and even maybe disagreed with on how to watch your kid or someone who had literally lost their mind. First of all, I'm not letting none of them watch my kids so we yes. figure this pizza gate shit. <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay. So are you what all the fuck in, you bro? About. I don't even like I, I don't even know why you said watch the kid. Are you on are you a QAnon? I, I don't know. I'm just re- I'm just seeing all these goddamn pizza slices and people's comments and shit. Yeah. And motherfuckers talking about Pizza Gate. I'm not letting none of these motherfuckers watch my kids and tell Pizza Gate. Yo. Hey. Yeah. Give you another I give you another fun fact. Right. I'm not even gonna sit here and act like I I, I knew this the whole time. I, I learned this from the public defender. Uh, the public defender, Nikki Solis, um, said how Kamala Harris founded this coalition called the Coalition to End the Explo- Exploitation of Kids. And she said Kamala spearheaded a task force to combat the human trafficking of young girls and that Kamala didn't prosecute young girls for prostitution. She recognized mm. they were victims who needed treatment for trauma and not criminals who needed to be in jail. That's and I read fire. that. I was like, wow, like that is one of those talking points that right now I missed all this goddamn pizza. That would stand out. Because I see a lot of people like really going after these politicians going, and going after these people that they think are part of this secret pedophile ring. Yeah. society pedophile ring. So if you see somebody who has a record of, for years, not somebody that just started doing this shit, somebody who has a record of for years going against human traffickers and not, you know, prosecuting young women for prostitution and mm. actually helping them to get trauma. So they, I mean, helping them to heal their trauma. That could go a long way, bro. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. That's, what I'm saying. that's, that's why I tell everybody, yo, just do your research. The Senator Kamala Harris. That's all. That's all I ask. That's it. That's it. And listen, make up your own mind. Ain't nobody making you vote. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. <laughs> All right. Yeah. That's it. I'm vote. I'm voting for Senator Kamala Harris. And do you think people really have an understanding about like what DAs and AGs do? No. They don't, right? No. I don't think I have one. That's what I'm saying. Like, I can't, 
you could say all these things about Kamala Harris and her record. I can't mm-hmm. disagree with you because I don't know yet. Next week, I'll do a little deep dive. I'll figure some shit out, et cetera. And then we can debate it. But I just don't know if, one, what you're saying is wrong. I assume it's right if you're saying it. But, two, I don't know if there's other information out there to dispute it. I always heard her record, especially on, like, marijuana convictions, was bad. I didn't realize. Which makes, which makes no sense. Right. That's, the, that's, like, one of the biggest ones that I'm like, how? Like, she's even on this marijuana board. I can't remember the name of this shit, but she's been on this shit for a while. Like, mm-hmm. I, I, I don't know. man. I don't know. I just, I do know that, you know, because I saw somebody post yesterday. <laughs> they posted a, a meme and it was Michael B. Jordan playing Oscar Grant mm-hmm. in Fruitville Station. Mm-hmm. And they said, if you watch this movie and you were sad, this was the prosecutor who prosecuted. And it was Senator Harris. Uh. It's, not, it's not even fucking true. Senator Harris wasn't, she's not even in that district. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's not even in that district. So how the fuck would she be the prosecutor on that case? That ne- Like, that never happened. So it's just like, yo, people get all of this different information via social media, and one person says something, and then this person runs with it, and they start mixing things up and crossing lines, and it just gets, it just gets really, really bad. Now, man. how but, do you uh, feel about her, her white husband? Doug? Care. Let's go. What I can't believe. Let's Doug go. Ball. White <laughs> dudes for the win. Let's go. That, that's actually Take you know by the way though, sisters. By the way, show that's a good conversation I would like for her to have because she didn't get married until she was fifty. What? She got married. In, yeah, she got married in two thousand fourteen. So I would Why like to know. To you, you know, growing up in Oakland, so she have kids? going to Howard. I, I don't. So. I don't think so. Nah, she don't have no kids. No oh, kids. Nah, she don't, don't have no kids. Know. Doug got kids, but she don't have kids. But you know, the, the interesting thing about that is like, mm. yo, I would love to know. Yeah, somebody needs to ask her why she waited so long. I'm not. A, I'm not. I'm, I, that's not a question I should ask. I'm a guy. Now I asked her about her white husband before, and she was what like, did I you fell say? In. She said I fell in love. I just asked her. I was like, you know, a lot of people question you because you have a white husband, and she was like, I, I, I love. I, I grew to love who I grew to love. That's like, right. That's right. <laughs> what was it? Nothing you could do. Nothing you can do. Ain't nothing you can do, bro. I'm saying when that that white fucking dap comes through, what is it? No, come on, show you better than this. Come on, come on, come on. on. That white ass penis comes through. (laughs) (laughs) That whap, son. We came through with the whap. Nothing you can do about it. Thank you, Shola. I knew I was missing something right there, though. But you believed in me. You kept throwing the alley. I threw the alley. I threw it back. Senator got the rebound. He missed it. You threw it back to me. I mean, fuck, we went for the alley right back, baby. <laughs> but no, I'm happy. I, I'm, um, it's going to be interesting. And by the way, nothing is guaranteed. Let's not act like. This is a slam dunk victory in November. Okay. Nothing is motherfucking guaranteed. People got to go out there and they got to vote. Yeah. You know, and it's going to be a battle. It's really going to be a battle. It's going to be funny. It's going to be interesting to watch. (laughs) I'm actually, I will have to say what a fucking idiot to the Trump administration only because I, I think I believe in them a little bit more when it comes to their petty and their social media tactics and how they attack people. And they disappointed me yesterday. Yeah, it was weak. It was weak. It was bro. weak. Like, come on, man. Yeah, it was weak. Like, like, like you literally. First of all, I was I was impressed that they had an ad ready for Senator Harris, I, and I knew they were going to do that. They threw two ads out there, but the ads are whack. And I tell you why the ads are whack because the ads really show why Senator Harris is a tough motherfucker because the ads are about her attacking Joe Biden, and Donald Trump said. Senator Harris was so nasty and so disrespectful. And I can't believe Joe Biden picked her. Bro, that says that says a lot. That says a lot that I can call you on your shit and you still say, man, that's a bad motherfucker. She need to be on our ticket. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And I thought it was whack that Donald Trump called her nasty and disrespectful for something he could use against Biden. Hmm. Senator Harris was calling Joe Biden out for his racist segregationist busing policy right trump you've been pushing the line a little bit on biden when it comes to how he talks about black people yeah so why would you give that up there's a i gotta show you this 
This is mm-hmm. my this is my favorite headline that I've seen because of course now all the headlines are coming back. <laughs> uh, what is it, April third, two thousand nineteen? Uh-huh. Kamala Harris on Joe Biden's accusers. I believe them. <laughs> now, now she's his vice president. What's the problem? Did though? you stop believing him? <laughs> well, no. It's a business, like, what, what's going on? What happened between then no. and now? Like, you're not going to still be his running mate if you still believe him. No, think about it like this, because I, because, because Joe Biden actually um put out a statement about that. Right. Mm-hmm. This was that was in April when he said that because they were asking Joe, they were asking her about Joe Biden's inappropriate touching. They didn't ask him about the Tara Reid shit because I don't think the Tara Reid shit was popping at that I point. I could be wrong. Inappropriate touching, and uh, there's some people who said like he like tried to kiss him or something like that. Yeah, and if I'm not mistaken, Joe Biden put out a statement about that where he didn't deny it. He just said he got to start giving. He said he know the times are different and he got to give women more space or some shit like that. Hold on, let me find that. I read that. I read that quote before, and that's what I was like. Yeah, Joe Biden pledges to respect women's personal space, and he kind of gave an apology. I, I guess it was an apology. Hmm. Let me see if I can pull that up. Yo, bro, I'm honestly. Bummed. Yeah, he said. Joe, he said Joe Biden has pledged to be more mindful about physical contact with women, hoping to draw a line under a controversy that has clouded his respected White House bid. And Joe, oh, he said social norms are changing. I understand that, and I've heard what these women are saying. Um. Yeah, and he's going to be more mindful. Yeah, it's the way I've always been. It's the way I try to show I care about them. And I'm listening. The boundaries of protecting personal space have been reset. I understand it. And I'll be much more mindful. So yeah, once again, good. once again, Kamala Harris speaking truth to power. I believe the women. Joe Biden coming through to acknowledge, yo, I was kind of foul. Salute to you, Kamala, for not being afraid. Mm-hmm. Y'all got to listen. They got to come with some better shit, man. I'm serious. This shit is kind of weak, bro. They got to come with some better shit because I like the fact that Senator Harris stood on a debate stage and uh, oppressed the motherfucker about why she was oppressed. Why the fuck did you have these racist segregationist policies? Mm. And I was one of those little girls. That's why I don't understand why Trump using that. Like Trump, you could have used that against Biden. And, and you, you, you calling a woman nasty and disrespectful because she's questioning somebody about her own oppression? <laughs> Get mm. the fuck out of here. Y'all, are, this shit is... I don't know, man. I was disappointed. I, I've, seen the, I've seen the Trump campaign come with some much better shit. You want that. some heat. You want some heat. I mean, I just to be something a little smarter. Like, that wasn't smart. That wasn't strategic, man. Right. It just wasn't. I'm excited, though. If Trump does lose, imagine how funny it's going to be when he, like, when they're trying to get him out the White House. I just feel like he's going to be crazy petty that's and a brat. That's what you think's going to happen? What? Trump no, I'm saying win. if he was to lose, it would be funny how to get him out because I feel like he wouldn't want to <laughs> You're not going to want to leave? <laughs> yeah. He can't wait to get out of that old ass building. He lives in nice hotels and shit like that. He don't want to be in that fucking. I've been house. seeing that in him, bro. What? I've been seeing that in him. Well, what? he don't want to be there. I don't think he wanted no he more. He really? don't want to be in there. Bro. <laughs> Yo, would anyone, bro? bro? Like, would anyone? It's the worst job. It's like the second you get hired, half the country hates you. The rest of the world kind of hates you, or at least is very critical of you, unless you, you know. I guess do right by every single country instead of doing right by your own. It's it's just the worst job. They tear apart your family, they tear apart your wife, they make fun of your kid. They literally make fun of your fucking child. Like it's yeah. just the worst. It's the fucking worst. And let's say, hypothetically speaking, that he's doing this not because of ego. Let's say he's doing it because he truly wants to help. Let's say any president do it because they just want to help. Let's just say that. Obviously, they all have insane egos and they're all sociopaths to a certain extent. But, like, mm-hmm. let's say you really are doing this because you want to help, and then while being helped, you're just getting torn the fuck apart every single day. You're yeah, like, that's fuck the game. these people. But you don't think- and he's not even getting paid, and he's like, don't pay me? Fuck that. But that's Trump why when you're a public servant, uh, it's yeah. not about you. That's just the truth of the matter. Yeah. When you're a public servant, it's not about you. But it's also not about my family, bro. It's not about it's my not. kid. Like, like, it's just some weird shit. I get it. Like who the um, fuck I'm gonna tell you what else I thought was positively brilliant. Did What's you that? see the fucking trailer for the Fresh Prince of Bel Air? Like, I don't know if you would call it a reboot, but it's somebody like it's a reimagining of the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, but it's a fucking drama. No, he never. Bruh, that. that shit looks 
Five. It's actually going to happen. That's the first time y'all are seeing that. That came out like a year or two ago. You're a liar. It came out. No, yesterday. I'm not. I saw the interview with Will Smith and the guy yesterday. But is it real? He, no, he's been discussed that a long time ago. Ooh. It came out. That's Hold on, trailer. I gotta look this up. Is it real though? It they're, just came they're out. About to ma- no, it didn't. Yes, it did. Taylor. I prove, promise prove you. Prove it, Taylor. Show us. Right, hold on, hold on. It, it came out. It. I mean, I saw it yesterday when Will Smith actually interviewed the guy. Because they're now in production of it, but that trailer came out a year ago or so. Oh, but it's actually it looks amazing, and the reason it looks amazing is because um it's a drama, right? Because when you think about the Fresh Prince, like you know, we laugh at the song, like hey, West Philadelphia, born and raised on the playground where I spent most of my day. They're all laughing, chilling, all cool, relaxing inside the pool. But then a couple guys, they were up to no good. Uh uh-huh. What was the up to no good they were up to? Uh uh-huh. Started making trouble in the neighborhood. What? He got in one little fight. What did they get in a fight for? It looked like it was over basketball, but we don't know what they really we got into a fight know. for. And we then his mom got scared. scared. <laughs> Do you know how much trouble Will Smith must have been getting in in Philadelphia for your mama to ship you all across, have all the, the, on the other side of the fucking country? That's From Philadelphia to Bel Air? That's a good ass point. Somebody must have been trying to kill you or something. You know what I mean? Like, you must have really got into some shit. What do you think that he got Why into? Why did the mom leave too then? The mom didn't leave because she got that whap. And they weren't gonna. They weren't. They weren't gonna let. They weren't gonna. Yo, I'm gonna tell you for real. Yo, yo they semi, gonna let, maybe semi wap though. Which, she probably had a. She probably had a boyfriend that was with the shit. The boyfriend's like, "Look, I'm gonna tell you something. Now, your pussy good enough to, to defend you, but not your son. Not your son. Right? I can't help your son. son. <laughs> I can't help your son. You know now, he's grown. All right, you gotta fight his own battle. But you." I ain't letting nobody hurt my whack. Nobody can hurt the whack. <laughs> we gonna keep this river running. We gonna keep this river running. We gonna keep this goddamn river running. You hear me? <laughs> okay. <laughs> what, what Yo, the- you know what's a shame, bro? You know how amazing and like passionate preachers are when they speak about God and they speak about life. Yes, sir. We need a preacher who, like, just breaks away from the congregation to just talk about pussy in that same way. (laughs) Like, imagine that same cadence. Imagine that same direction. Imagine that same passion, but talking about what? Bro. Just think about that. This should be a deep dive. Let's Yo, let's it. talk about it, bro. <laughs> let's deep let's dive. talk about wait, it. Wait, wait, play, play, play some ass first. Oh, we got you. This episode is sponsored by, while we're talking about WAPs, you know what you need for a WAP? You need a had. You need a hard ass dick. If you're going to have a WAP, you need a hard ass dick. You heard me? Okay, and how you going to do that? You're going to do that with Blue Chew. Same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, all those things. Only it works twice as fast. You're not sitting around for an hour waiting for that shit to get in. 20 minutes, boom, you're ready to go. And you give your girl, you give the lady you're trying to impress, you give the side chick, you give whoever it is the night of her fucking life. Fuck it, make a weekend. Go away. Magical weekend for two, three. I mean, you're going to have enough dick for as many people as you want. Bluechew.com, promo code idiots. You get to try it for free. All you got to do is pay $5 shipping. Okay, bluechew.com promo promo code idiots. You get it for free. All you got to do is pay $5 shipping. This is not a game. Complete game changer. I'm telling you. Hardest dick you'll ever have. You can actually control the nut way better. Alex even said his dick grew. So that's how amazing Blue Chew is. You go get it and get that hat into a WAP right now. I also want to let you know that this episode has been sponsored by Squarespace. That's right. You want to turn that dream into a reality? You need a website. What do I mean by that? It is not a business unless it has a website. This is very simple. You do not have a business unless you have a website, okay? I don't care if you have a restaurant. I don't care if you have a clothing store. I don't care what the fuck it is you have. You need a website. That is your destination, especially now that people aren't going into brick and mortars anymore because of corona. Having a website is that much more important. They got all the e-commerce functionality that you could ever want. They have people that you can uh, message 24-7. If you need any sort of a customer support, I'm telling you, this is the best way to build a website and you can do it for free. You can just build the website on their uh, platform for free. And when you're ready to make it live, then you can pay. And when you're ready to pay, you go to squarespace.com slash idiot. You get that free trial. When you're ready to pay, you make sure you use that code idiot. You're going to get 10% off your purchase for a web of a website or domain. 
I'm telling you, if you have a business, if you have a passion project, if you have any sort of dream, get a website for it immediately. Now, let's get back to the show. Charlemagne, let's start to Let do this something, deep man. You know, you said something a little while ago and you talked about how there should be a reverend or a preacher to talk about vagina the way they talk about God. And I'm going to tell you something, Show you don't understand how accurate you are with that. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually had that conversation this week with a great, great friend of mine um, who I love dearly. Bro, the vagina is God. Ooh. What, 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 why are we lying to ourselves? Every, look, Schultz, Creates everything life. we do revolves around the vagina. Uh. We create life through the vagina. Uh huh. Life comes out of the vagina. Life goes in it. We all work hard so we can have a little bit of change to take care of our vaginas. Because mm -hmm. in the words of JT and Young Miami, broke niggas don't deserve no pussy. Ooh. You understand what I'm saying? So yes. when we talk about vagina, when 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 you when you talk about it in disrespectful ways, and you know you talk down on it, and you talk about wanting to beat it up, and you, know, you talk about how you, know, you don't love these these hoes, and you know bitches ain't shit, all of that nonsense. It's 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 complete garbage. We worship vaginas, but what if they want us to beat it up? Well, you try your best, but as Taylor told us, they lie to us. No. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that, oh, is that not God? Is God not a forgiving God? Is God not a forgiving God? Come on now. You put that little, you put that little <laughs> whap in somebody's shorts and you think you're doing something and she's just, uh, 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 instilling that confidence in you. Right. As only, <laughs> as only a faith in a higher power could. Only a God yes. would be that merciful and give you that kind of grace. That is that's what true. that's what that's what women need to start calling men with low penises. That's what they do to us. They give us grace. 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 <laughs> yes. That's grace. Yes, that is grace. The vagina's God, Shokes. The vagina might be God. Shoma, you have a really good like preacher. Like he had the face right and everything. I feel yeah, like you I'm, had the I'm cadence going. Right I kind of want you to keep talking yeah. about <laughs> vagina. Keep talking. I would have been. I would have been an amazing scammer. I scammer? promise you. If, <laughs> yes, if they listen, and by scam I mean preacher. If things, <laughs> if, if things, if things ever don't go right, I had a, I had another backup plan, um, but now I'm a, I'll just be a pastor. Really? <laughs> what? Yes. What denomination? Huh? <laughs> what religion? Oh, I don't know. How about, you said denomination. I was like, what the fuck is he asking me right now? I thought, you, I, thought I started to start. I started to name Decepticons. I started to say Optimus Prime, Megatron. <laughs> like, Isn't what? it denomination? <laughs> it is that, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yes. All I'm simply saying is I really do truly believe that I believe women and I and, and, and Schultz isn't going to agree with me on this. I believe women Should are vote. the closest thing we got to God on this planet, bro. Interesting. Yeah. Why won't I believe you on that? I don't know. Sexism. I mean, I am sexist. <laughs> <laughs> but in the good ways. <laughs> what? what? I'm in the good ways on sexist. Explain. Like, I don't think you should have to protect yourself. That's my job to protect you. Okay. Oh, That's okay. very sexist. Because no, I'm not. not looking what? at you going, oh, you're capable of protecting yourself just as well, as I'm that capable of sexist, protecting you, that is, yeah. that is blatant that is, sexism. Yeah. Taylor, how you gonna say that as a black woman when all black women say all day long is how we don't protect y'all? <laughs> yeah. No, but in a yeah. way, you know how he's explaining it. It is yeah. though, because at the end of the day, sexism is we, hot. <laughs> like <laughs> women love sexism, yo. Like I don't right. ever let my girl on, pay I for agree, shit. Right. Let me look up the definition before you. Even Taylor, do you want men to protect you or not, Taylor? Do you, you want, want no black men to protect you or not? I don't all men to protect not you. all men but your man should he protect you yes okay oh, okay see, now see i don't agree with that Taylor. what if you walking by yourself uh-huh right and some guy say two guys just jump you god forbid I for no reason and god it's just some forbid. dudes it's just some dudes sitting on the step watching you get beat up like that ain't my girl that's fucked up they're not supposed to up. intervene no you're right you're right that's sexism the world no, not, runs on not, sexism. That no, is no, sexism. Let me look up the definition before you. You think that we gonna sexism. watch? We think we're gonna intervene if a dude's getting beat up. We're gonna videotape it. 
<laughs> right? That, that's it's a it's viral sexism. video. Sexism <laughs> is... <laughs> the dude's getting beat up. <laughs> Fuck out of here, bro. It says sexism is prejudice, stereotyping, or discriminating typically against women yes. on the basis of okay. sex. I so discriminate... This, 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 on women on the basis of sex in terms of I will not allow you to fight for yourself. Says, I will fight for you. I will protect you. I will provide for you. Now, is that a stereotype, though? Meaning that if a woman is is getting into it with a man, mm -hmm. all right, should I just assume she can't fight? Yes. Exactly. No, you shouldn't. All right, yes, should, I, should. Or should I just assume she can't beat a man? But uh, yes, you that's should. that's true, though. You, like, yes, men you are stronger than women, though. Say it with your chest. <laughs> <laughs> Say it with your chest, because that seems sexist, what you just said. <laughs> that was wild sexist right there. Sounds like we got something in common. Wap. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be specific, Taylor. You got to say men are physically stronger. Men are physically stronger. That's and sexist, by the way, yo. Even at the end of the day, technically, that's not true. Because hey, bro. With, hey, bro. No, I'm not going to bring it up. Hey, no. bro. You know who's sexist? God. Why God, you say that? Because he made us different. Why'd he make us different? Yeah, Why'd he make us he, stronger? Why'd he make you guys emotionally stronger? He made us Why stronger in different ways, you though. Emotionally say, you ever had a kidney stone, Schultz? Say what? <laughs> you ever had a kidney stone? I don't believe in him. <laughs> I never had one either. I'm sure that uh, Chris has had an infinity stone. Chris has had everything. Infinity? <laughs> infinity <laughs> Chris, Chris has had every terrible... Chris has had a kidney stone. <laughs> every, <laughs> infinity stone. Listen, everything that can be treated, Chris has had. Chris, have you had a kidney stone? Is he there? Yeah, I had one. Uh, See, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See? 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 How was the pain, Chris? Because uh, I'm, pre I'm prepared to argue it was bad as childbirth and it lasted two weeks and no oh, childbirth is two that's weeks. That's sexism. So I, I argue I have my wife beat in that category. That's and sexism. That's what, that's, bro. What men, that's what I always hear men that's say. They sexism. say kidney stones feel like childbirth. How do that's they even sexism. know what that even How would a guy um, even know what childbirth exactly. is to even compare, that is sexist. Chris? That is exactly. sexist, Chris. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, I'm guilty then because that was unbelievable pain. What were you? What were pain. you saying? Like when you felt the pain, like what kind of sounds are coming out? I was on the floor throwing up. <gasps> I, I I had to go to the hospital twice. Oh my! Did you have God. contractions? <laughs> Whatever they were, I don't know. But it yeah. was. It's the same concept. It's something moving through a space that's too small for the space. Yeah, that's yeah. all. Yeah. It is. Same thing. Y'all know it's that not that a feels human. Like ladies, yeah, you know I'm saying it's Wait, not what? a human, but. I'm saying all that to say women are designed to take a different level of pain than men are because we can't even kidney. You heard what Chris said? Kidney stones took him out. Nonetheless, pushing out a whole human being. Yeah. You know what I mean? Different level. That's so, yeah. So you guys are stronger in terms of your ability to take on pain. Okay. But that's sexism. God that's made cool. things like that. You got to allow sexism to be part of the culture. Is it sexism or just the way a biological construct? Yes. That's what it is. Are you saying that's what sexism is? That's what sexism is. It's built off of biology. That's why we can't be against sexism. Like when you try to act like men and women are the same, you're going to get in a lot of trouble. But if you just acknowledge that we deserve equal rights, you deserve equal opportunity, you deserve everything a guy should have but we're also different, then everything's good. Does it hurt when girls poop? Because I've never seen anything where a girl, like, you know how on movies or TV shows when, you know, our stomach hurts and we got to run to the toilet. And yep. I've never seen that with a woman. It seemed like women just get it out quick. No. It depends what, what you eat. Sometimes you're <laughs> constipated. <laughs> huh? I'm just sometimes trying to find some physical contrast. Yeah. What? No, well, not I've never been constipated before, but, like, Whatever you eat, it will... It's going to come out. Yeah. Is it ever so much that sometimes it comes out of the vagina hole too? <laughs> <laughs> no. Ew. That's not how it works? No. <laughs> okay, I that's think, good. I think that women... I think that if we had to equate strengths of men and women, I think that at the end of the Madden rating, we would all end up with 99s. Say again? Based off... I said if we all had to equate our, our strengths as men yeah. and women at the end of the Madden rating, we would all end up at 99 just based off all of the different things like physical, emotional, or mental, maybe, spiritual, nurturing, or, whatever or it is. Charlotte, you know maybe, what I'm saying? I think we would all not, end at 99. Maybe it's not that we end up at 99, but maybe it's like we got 
you know, we have like uh, 80 points to go around. And sometimes we have more points in like the strength category. They have more points in like the emotional exactly. category. Like it's Come just, on, but at the same, when we you all say get emotional, 80. When you say emotional, because men are definitely emotional. No, it's not that we're not emotional. I think that uh, women have a more complex emotional spectrum. Okay. So like you feel more things. We feel less to. things and we feel them way greater. So where Ooh. women feel a million different things on a million different levels. Men feel this. angry, happy, sad, hungry. Hold on, show it. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah. Men feel the emotions that society tells us we're allowed to exactly. feel. Exactly, yeah. Ah. Until, yes. until we do the work on ourselves to allow ourselves to feel all of these other emotions. I think a exactly. lot of women feel those emotions already naturally. Yes. You know, you know how women will say things like, oh, you want you open up? Yes. Be more vulnerable. Yes. Society tells men we ain't supposed to do that. Yeah. Right. But so then so then our emotional reactions are only shown when they hit the extremes and we can't bottle them up anymore. Whereas women, Boom. women are allowed and rewarded for having these uh, you know, lesser emotional outbursts, not even outbursts is the word, but like, they're just like, yeah, I'm just feeling a little grumpy today. You're just allowed to feel that way. Where guys, we just got to be like, no, nah, I'm good. Stiff upper, upper lip. Let's go. Absolutely. Let me ask Absolutely. you a question. So and when that, you, and, and, go ahead. Huh? That's sexism. I was going to say, and you it guys use be. the term of like, oh, that woman's acting like a man. If she acts or is her emotional state is not the typical no like, we don't say women are like a man no you guys never said that before. when we call you crazy it's because we're judging you based on a man's a man's emotional spectrum so if you're behave for example if i go yo you're acting crazy i'm saying that as if one of my boys acted like you because i would call him crazy if he was acting the way you were acting that's what crazy is. Whenever men call a woman crazy, I'm we're judging you on a man's emotional scale. Though, like I've been called, oh, Taylor acts like a guy because I'm not as per se soft or like I'm not as emotional or. That's whatever. refreshing. I like that kind of stuff, but maybe that, a some lot of guys, guys don't. don't like that though. Nah, fuck them. Do you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't like to do that either. I don't like to do that with men or women. I don't like to say somebody's acting like a guy. I don't like to say somebody's acting like a girl. I'll say and someone's and, acting like. And, a girl. and I don't like. I don't like calling people pussy because calling them pussy is calling them god. And why would you call them something that you actually enjoy? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I never and I hate. When, I hate when I hear women call. Guys, bitches. Because it's like, what are you saying? Yeah, you calling them yourself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, what you, like, what, like, when you, like, Taylor, tell me, when you call a man a bitch, what do you mean by that? I guess, You're like what you said, like, yourself. I'm not insulting myself because I'm not a bitch. But, Yo. um. Yo, what but, do you mean? But. I want to hear it. Cause I, I could see, so, she's going to contradict herself and it's fine. I'm not going to contradict it's a teachable myself. Moment. Go, go, go. No, but I know when, usually when women call a man a bitch, it's like they're, they're soft and like they're being a punk. All traits, sadly, that some people label on women, yeah. especially the soft part. Okay. Not the punk part, but per se, but the soft part. Mm -hmm. So you're That's using, you're using the worst version of yourself and you're calling it to someone else yeah when i call someone a pussy or when i call someone a bitch i'm not talking them i'm not talking to them as someone who's being a woman i'm calling them i'm saying you're acting as if you get entered <laughs> you're acting like you get penetrated yeah like you're acting it's in a way thing. It's like you thing. get penetrated okay. no it's the same thing i'm gonna be honest with you. I, I have to i would have to uh yeah every time i've done that in my life it's been wrong because like whether you call a person the P word or the B word, or even say, stop acting like a girl. Like we do that. And it's, that is very insulting to women. Cause I'm going to be totally honest with you. I know some women that is harder than all of you niggas. Right. <laughs> right. Like, it's just the truth to the matter. I'm just, I've, I've always had more women around me than guys. And it's only because women have shown, shown me to be more tougher mm. and, and more logical. Mm. Now, now I ain't talking about toughness when it's a physical altercation time to fight. I'm just talking about the, the rigorous shit that you got to deal with in everyday life on an emotional, mental, spiritual level. Mm. Only women going to help you get through that. I'm telling mm. you that right fucking now. Mm. Especially black women. That's just the truth to the matter. I, I am who I am right now because of my mother and my grandmother. 
Mm. And my, my, my father definitely assisted in that process. But a lot of the negative things that he instilled in me, right, the, the man things, my mother and my grandmother absolutely balanced out. If that makes sense. Mm. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know what my I don't know what my mind state would be if I only listened to my father. Because mm. I mean, I love my pops, but he just was a nigga in a real way. Right. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like my father's the type of person we'd be sitting around and three's company will come on. And my dad would say, look at that maggot. But he didn't say maggot. <laughs> he was like, you, you living with them two goddamn women and ain't doing nothing. Right. <laughs> That's the kind of stuff that seeps into your brain as right. a young child until you have a woman, the divine feminine. Right. Who can say, no, that's not how you should be talking about people. Yo, or, is, or that's not how you should be talking to people. Is that where like sexual harassment comes from? Is that the seed of it? Where like he's upset because that guy's living with two girls and he's not trying to fuck neither one of them. Right. And then you hear that and you're like, oh, shit, if I don't constantly try to fuck girls, people will think I'm gay. And now anytime a girl walks around or she's cute or a girl's walking down the street or a girl drives by or whatever. Now you're like, I got to hit on this girl or else people around me will think I'm gay. That's a great statement. But you led with sexual harassment. So I will say no. Sure. All right. <laughs> I don't know why you let with sexual harassment. What do you call it? Street harassment? Uh, what, stre- Cat calling? Cat calling. Yes, the, but, but what you're saying is true. The, the, the constant trying to prove that you are a man. Because yes. That's what you're taught men do. Sleep with a bunch of women. Yeah. Holler at a bunch of women. Be a pussy hound. Yeah. Right? That's what you're taught. So, yes, that is instilled in you by usually... Your father or uncles or older people in your life. Like, that's just the truth to the man. I tell y'all this story all the time. When I confronted my father about cheating, my father looked me dead in my eyes and said to me, oh, you only got one girlfriend? Mm-hmm. One, day, one day you're going to understand. So in my mind, I'm like, am I, am I supposed to have a whole bunch of girls? One's too close to none, bro. I, I was, I've always been like a faithful dude that could be with one woman. You know what I'm saying? So, yes, if, if I'm out here cheating and creeping, whatever, it's because my daddy instilled something in me that was wrong i was broken yeah i was a broken little boy you know what i'm saying i was a broken little boy and that's why i had to go do the work on myself you know what i'm saying i had a lot of trauma Mm. can you tell i've said this before in front of i think so when i got caught yeah (laughs) (laughs) it's just an interesting expectation to be upheld it is right it's like it is being a man is hard bro fight for your masculinity it's exhausting Mm. Like, it's exhausting. Fight for your being, masculinity every second. You, wait, Come on, wait, yo. wait, wait, wait. Being society's version of a I man I don't have that. Look hard. how I'm seated. Like, clearly, <laughs> I don't feel like I have to fight for my masculinity every second. Okay? I've got my balls tucked between my legs and my dick on top. It's <laughs> I never felt like I had to fight for my masculinity. I don't feel I, like but, I have to, but I also haven't had the same experience as other people have grown up. So I now it resonates with me more like the people who constantly would just be like hitting on every single girl they saw. It was like, oh, you are fighting for your reputation. You're fighting for your masculinity. In a lot of ways, it's not even about the girl. It's yeah. about yourself. So you're cat calling this girl. It's always usually with their other friends. Yeah, so your, yeah. your friends think you're somebody not so you yeah. could be with this girl. So when yeah. she rejects you, don't be upset because it never was about you getting with her in the first place. Yeah, yeah, it's about your ego. But that's and, why we always say men lead with ego on all these issues. Our mm-hmm. ego says we have to fuck a bunch of women. Our ego says we can't be faithful to one girl. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, yo, we used to, come on. We used to give guys shit back in the day when they only had one girlfriend. We never did that. Well, I mean, but you know what? I've always said, Schultz, the true story. Mm-hmm. I've always said you've always been a good example because when I've seen you with your woman, mm-hmm. that was the one woman you was with. That's right. It's, and by mind you, this is, you know, this, he's still faithful now, but I'm talking about the conversations we're talking about eight, nine years ago. Yeah. You know, when I used to live... <laughs> well, listen, listen. When I used to live 
for an out of town shoot. <laughs> Where are we going? Where are we going? <laughs> we in LA? Yes. SLS Beverly Hills. I got <laughs> so I, have, I have a question for you guys. That bro. SLS, bro. I have a question for you guys. I am so glad I gear I grew up because I had a lot of work in them streets. You hear me? <laughs> Different time. I had, I had a Different lot time. of work in them streets. I was a I was a wild boy. No, nah, but it's good to get that out. Good to get that out the system. It was all ego. I, I'm telling you, it was all ego. It was me um, coming into this new version of the idea of me being you like to try uh, on the this, fucking cape, bro. You the superhero. You want to try I, it out? I never been this version of Charlemagne mm -hmm. five six years ago. TV and. Breakfast Club booming. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, and, and as a wise man told me one time, a superhero going to test out his superpowers. Uh-huh. It's so, like a girl, know, gets, just, a girl gets a, a boob job. She's going to wear some crop shirts. She just wants to see how them things operate in the real world. She wants to see what she's going to get. She wants to see if she goes even, to the nightclub, you know? And you don't blame her. This is what it is. Deep, a little deeper. Like, you know, you're, you're a young black man who grew up on a dirt road in Monk's Corner, South Carolina. And, um... You get to a certain position, and now these women that you either grew up looking at in King Magazine or watching on TV Speak or maybe on TV now, whatever Talk it is. Talk about it. Blue wanna, checks. You got that blue check box. Hey, they've been hearing about me talk about this little seven inch three fourth. Ooh. Eight when it's warm out. Ooh. August comes. They want to see what it's about. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> she, they want to test my gangster. Okay. You out here on the, you on the radio talking about sucking farts out of women's asses. Well, let's see about it. Let's see about it. <laughs> they want to see what's up. They want to see if I'm really about that shit. I'm kicking on the goddamn radio. They got a dangly thing in their throat, Charlemagne. <laughs> <laughs> they need that shit moved out the way. That's all I'm saying. So yes, it was a wild time about eight nine years ago, but it was all driven by ego. Mm. And the best decision I ever made in my life was 2016, October 2016, when I said I'm going to grow up mm -hmm. and stop being a little ass boy and start being a motherfucking man mm. and be a real father and, and, and real, real husband. OK, and my life has been amazing ever since. Now, I want you all to really think about this and I'm not even fucking joking, yo. Go back and look at old pictures of me. Y'all give Dr. Sandy a lot of credit. And Dr. Sandy deserves a lot of credit. But one of the things Dr. Sandy instilled in me was lifestyle change. Mm. When I stopped all that drinking, all that, 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 that smoking, you know, all that staying up all night, eating bad, you know, sleeping with a bunch of different women. Those dark blotches you used to see in my face. Yeah. That was just guilt. Oh. And, re <laughs> and, re and regret. Oh. Okay. That's that's that you get those blotches in your face when you ain't living right. When you out here doing wrong by your girl. Oh Every time God. I cheated on my wife, a little patch got darker. You know what I'm saying? So if you ever thought I was out here looking like a bruised banana or a bruised eggplant, that is the reason why. But boy, when I changed my lifestyle, cleared up and and, and stopped leading leading with ego and I'm in I'm in am I not glowing? Wow. <laughs> yeah. You might be glowing, bro. <laughs> Am I not glowing? Come on, look, look at the glow. Nah, it's true, dude. You I didn't like see the glow, glow on top of your head. Yeah, honestly, you know I mean? the lights are reflecting <laughs> off the top of your head. You have like a little halo thing I going. Know. It's amazing. Because God know, God know what I'm doing. Listen, God knows what we're all doing. <laughs> oh, shit. You hear me? Yeah. He knows. He, he or she knows mm. what we're all doing. We can't lie to our creator. So when you see somebody, I'm telling you what they're going through, you'll see it all in their face. You'll see it in their eyes. Mm. When they are living the way they're supposed to be living, glow. <laughs> I just had to check my shit, make sure I'm cute. That's I've all. I've been That's cute, all. bro. Let's pay some bills and um, <laughs> let's do a little uh, shit you won't care about next week. Bills, and bro. ask an idiot. Yeah, we got to hit Ask an Idiot today. Taylor, you know what? Fuck it. Let's just go right to Ask an Idiot after I'm these with bills. You. All right, let's take a break for a second. Uh, from tight muscles, tough workouts, signs of aging, to simply making it through each busy day. Everyone understands what it feels like to be tense and sore so everybody can benefit from TheraOne's CBD products. Now, you know I fuck with CBD, uh, but this brand of CBD was started by Dr. Jason Worsland. TheraBody exists to provide you with the best scientifically validated natural solutions to help soothe your body and relax your mind. It started with the revolutionary TheraGun percussive therapy device. When Dr. Jason saw the benefits of using CBD in his treatments, he created TheraOne to bring you CBD products done right. 
Okay, a lot of CBD products claim organic, but still contain up to 30% filler, and these fillers are potentially toxic. With TheraOne's industry-leading CBD products, you can ease discomfort, soreness, and stiffness, fight the effects of inflammation, support better sleep quality, and that's all crucial for 2020. Trust me, okay? TheraOne tests their products four times before they get to you. Every product is USDA certified organic, grown in the U.S., and their CBD extracts are the highest quality available anywhere. There are one CBD products of full spectrum. That means it's the most effective because it contains all components of the hemp plant. Simply put, there are one customers are truly getting all the good stuff. Okay. You can use there are one's warming lotion in your morning routine, the cooling lotion or massage oil to recover. That's what I use after I work out body balm for targeted relief and the sleep tincture to drift into a deep night's sleep. I get that little cream and I put a little on my forehead here, a little on both temples and rub it in. My God, you'll sleep like a baby. Why do people say sleep like a baby when babies don't even goddamn sleep? <laughs> Why do we say that? Why we got to really because update be... some of these old sayings that we use? Babies rarely, I mean, they sleep, but they sleep at the hours that you're up. So yeah, it don't really but count. They're saying when they sleep like a baby, like you could kind of turn on the lights and not going to really wake up like that. If they're really sleeping, they're not going to really oh. wake up like that. Okay. <laughs> well, now through Labor Day, which is Monday, September 7th, TheraOne is offering our listeners a buy one, get one free for all TheraOne products. But you've got to go to TheraOne.com slash idiots. If you don't love what you get from TheraOne, send it back for a full refund within 30 days of purchase. That's T-H-E-R-A-O-N-E dot com slash idiots for a buy one, get one free for all TheraOne products through Labor Day. Um, What on. you got? <clears throat> this is from... D Hill underscore fit. What would a United States look like if all races truly had an equal start and slavery never occurred? Do you think one race would still rise as dominant? Just wondering what America without prejudice or systematic racism would actually look like. Would one race rise as dominant? I think that it would be sort of like it is now um, where different races would thrive in different fields. Um, but it would be very competitive because, you know, we don't know if certain races make great doctors. You know, you got all these stereotypes. Oh, this race makes great lawyers. This race makes great doctors. This race makes great basketball players. We don't know because I think a lot of times based on your race, you gravitate towards certain things. You know what I mean? There might be some fire Asian rappers out there. Jay may not be the only one. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It might be some. So it might be a lot of amazing uh, Italian basketball players. I don't know. You know what I mean? It might be some great. I'm sure it is great black lawyers, but I'm just saying, simply saying we gravitate towards certain things based off what our race is. So I think it would be very competitive. But I think um, I think you'd, you'd, you'd be surprised at what people could do. Yeah. With opportunity. Yeah. I think people always find a way to like create hierarchies to like make themselves feel better without doing anything because that's all hierarchies yeah. are, right? It's just like, how do I give myself status without working for it? Oh, I have blue eyes and blue eyes are the best. Why are they the best? You go to countries where everybody has blue eyes and they like brown hair and brown eyes because that's what's unique. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like people always yeah. find different ways to create hierarchies. What I think what it would happen is maybe those hierarchies wouldn't wouldn't be like racially specific. Maybe it'd be about dicks. religion or like maybe be dicks. You know, it would maybe definitely be, be big dick. It would definitely be dick size, bro. I promise you. Yo, but even in history, <laughs> now nah, you didn't see that there are times in history where I think it was like Greek history or Roman history. I forget. You can look it up, but like where they they tricked everybody into thinking big dicks were um, gross and they were like animalistic, and it was their way of like fighting back against big dicks. So the people in charge try. tricked all the women into wanting little dicks. And that's why those Greek statues all got those tiny little dicks. Really? Swear that to God. like me. Yo, Chris, Chris, <laughs> you know shit. How you just telling me this and you know. True story. That I, True I have story. A Yo, Chris. How you just telling me this and you know I have a phobia about big dicks. Yo, Chris. <laughs> no. I know. You would have been the first one. You've been Why the first one like, yeah, get them big dick animals out of here. <laughs> I've been leading this tribe. So yeah, Yo, get Chris, all these big dick motherfuckers out of here. Is it Greek or Roman? What is it, Chris? Greek. It's Greek, right? And, and and break it down exactly. There's a racial component, isn't there? Yes, they're Egyptian teachers. They're, they're uh, Egyptian. I don't know about that, but I know that <laughs> in the in the artwork, they they specifically tried to celebrate uh, smaller men in that regard. It wasn't the case in Roman. 
And, uh, you know, the Greek, the Greeks obviously had a very liberal attitude towards homosexuality, too. So, so they you know, needed I, them I think tiny maybe that was part of it. I don't know. Butts. What a fucking waste of stone. <laughs> I mean, That's God hilarious. damn. Nobody appreciates little dicks, not even on a nice statue. You should have been That's in Greece, <laughs> bro. Greece, they loving little dicks out there, dogs. I, I don't, well, I don't have a little dick. Say what? I would have had a big, clearly I would have had a big one in Greece. You would have had a big old Greek dick, bro. That's what you got to do. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> not for real, bro. This Why is you say Greek. it like no, that? No, bro, you get that chicken souvlaki, dog. No ball D. <laughs> that chicken souvlaki, that's what you need to get. I got that ball D, that big old Greek dick. <laughs> that big ball old, D. Yo, they call you the Greek freak, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start calling myself that around the house. So baby, I need you to call me Bog D from now on. What the fuck you mean, Bog D? Big old Greek dick. Get that dick bogged down in your pussy. Oh my god! <laughs> I, I have to get a tow truck to pull this dick out when I bog it down in that ditch of yours. <laughs> what is happening, yo? What's going on, yo? Yo, what's what's really going on, I really man? Hope Real it's talk, not bro. the sex oh, talk. Charlotte just blacked out, bro. <laughs> Charlotte really just blacked out. He started thinking about pussy. He got lost in that shit. He turned 13 again. Because but, pussy is God. That's it. Vagina is God. Facts. All right? Facts. Women are God. Go, Taylor. Go. All right. Next question. Okay. <laughs> big old ball. Big old dick. <laughs> ball deep. deep. Deep in that ditch. Got to get a tugboat. Tug that shit out. Boop, boop. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh my okay. god, crazy. <laughs> he said what? this guy's crazy. I'm the crazy one. <laughs> you are crazy, man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh. I'm gonna switch gear. Well, maybe not. <laughs> what? Oh, what? oh, what? It's Christmas time. Saw off this dick. Put it in the middle of Times Square. Now you got your Christmas tree for Times Square with this big old dick. <laughs> wrap, wrap some Christmas lights around this dick. And you put some Christmas presents That's at the bottom of this dick. And you got a big old Christmas tree dick. <laughs> That's how they talk in the old days, too. Like. <laughs> Got this yeah. big old goddamn Christmas tree dick, all right? You think them balls, the man balls, them gifts. Lick them gifts, girl. Lick them gifts under this big old Christmas tree. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, those ain't, hey, those ain't balls, those ornaments on that goddamn Christmas tree. All right? All right? You see them goddamn ornaments under that goddamn Christmas tree now. <laughs> It's in the middle of the summer. Motherfucker talking about Christmas. Ugh. Pull his dick out. Pull his dick out in the middle of the summer talking to his wife. Now, come on now. Don't act like you don't like this Christmas tree now. You see them ornaments now. Why is it always got to go to the country? Them, you see them too, ornaments though. now. Come on now. Go on and be the angel and get on top of this tree. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that one going to do a country accent, too? Bro, what is going? What's even going on? Oh, my God. Come on, Taylor. Give us ready? another one. Like, you right, ready? Give, give us another question right. before we get right back into this. Hey, hey the, reception for the, the, the reception for the TV yeah. isn't working. Honey, can you fix it? Why I take this? You see? Hey, 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 hey come on now. <laughs> You want me to bring my remote over there to change the channel? Oh Did you say TV? Gosh. You want me to bring this goddamn Optima remote over there to change the goddamn channel? Now, come on now. You got to press the buttons now. Oh. Come on now. Press the buttons. Cow. That little part right under there, that's the Netflix button. Touch that. All Touch right. that, and I'm going to come on. Oh, you say come on? Bro, we say come on. What you trying to turn on? Can't turn on nothing. Can't turn on this TV without this goddamn remote now. <laughs> oh my god! What is wrong with Andrew? Oh yo, 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 wild man! Andrew's yo, a wild boy, man. Wild out here, bro. <laughs> yo, Andrew's a wild, a wild boy. All right, so. <laughs> Cal. This is from Calvin <laughs> underscore Knox ninety two. Okay. What new industry will pop up from this, or what industry will look vastly different after COVID? Hmm. I don't know if it's a new industry, but uh, you're going to see 
a lot of variations of the audio business. Mm. A lot, you know, um, because I think that the kind of content that we're producing, like whether it's podcast, uh, I think that there's going to be, you know, scripted audio content, which already exists. I think it's just going to be a lot more of that because I think that we showed, you know, through a pandemic, this is, this is what people want. They want mm. information. They want companions. It's like, it's like same thing with radio. Like radio has always been people's companion. People get in the car and they turn breakfast club on in the morning or they turn Angie Martinez in the afternoon or Dale Hughley in the afternoon because they have a companion that they can ride with. And I think it's the same thing with podcasts. Yo, let me go see what Charlotte and Schultz doing. I'm on my ride home. I feel like I'm with them. I feel like I'm kicking it with them. Mm. So now I think it's about uh, storytelling. I think you're going to see a lot more storytelling in the audio space. Mm. You know what I mean? That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's what I think. That's how, yeah, I agree, man. I think that sounds right. Just more like uh, kind of advanced, um, scripted, higher production podcast probably. But also now that since, since we're at home, I think there's this great opportunity to do visual. I think you see like all these podcasts that don't have a visual aspect. I think a lot yeah. of them are like, yo, let's just cook up some some video for this because we're not doing nothing anyway. We might as Absolutely. well. But yeah, I see that. For sure. Um, what else uh, we got, Taylor? Chase589 says, what's the song that brings you closest to tears? I don't know, but whatever Charlotte was just doing with that Southern character <laughs> brought me very close to tears. I don't even know how we started that. Oh, yeah. Gee, I got a song that'll bring you close to tears. <laughs> put, it, put it in your goddamn mouth by Akinelli. Because when I put this goddamn Christmas tree in your mouth and hit that little dangly thing in the back of your throat, you're going to start gagging and your eyes going to start watering and you're going to cry. You're going to cry, <laughs> goddamn it. All right? Put it in your mouth, Bacchanelli. That's that's the song that brings tears to my eyes. Tear, tears right? of joy, though. Tears of joy, right? Tears, tears of goddamn joy. Uh-huh. Tears of joy. Because uh-huh. I'm glad I got the kind of bog D that motherfucking brings tears to a woman's eyes because I can touch that little dangling thing in the back of your motherfucking throat. Okay. <laughs> And, and Charlotte, hey, that's, that's, that's exactly how a woman talked to you when you got a little dick and you talking to her like that. You feel that bald D, don't you? You feel that bald D, don't you? Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Whatever you say. Yeah. Bald D. Bald D. I don't know what a bald D is. What is it <laughs> before you bald D? Go bald D. Go Go bald D. Go bald D. Go. I think it's balls deep, not yeah, it is bog balls D. deep. You're saying what? I'm you saying bald D. Big old Greek dick. <laughs> that's what the fuck I'm saying bog D alright I know what I'm saying bog D <laughs> okay. oh my gosh. Right. first of all balls deep has always been the stupidest thing ever ain't nobody on in the history of the world ever put their balls in a vagina no don't but you go deep don't disrespect God like that you go up to the balls you put the dick all the way to the balls. I know that's what? how everybody fucks is you go all the way to the balls. Like, why are we acting like that's hard to do? Exactly. What if you got a two inch penis? Balls deep. You still balls deep. That's no bragging balls deep. Yo, I went balls deep on her last night. Would well, be fire if you were like, yo, I just went he- head. <laughs> yo, I went head deep on her, bro. And, I, and then it filled up. <laughs> I filled the whole thing up head deep. That is big dick. Oh, All right. think about it. Because like um, um, there's so much left after you put just the tip in. Yeah. You don't think, you don't know what I'm talking about? Like, you know, when you put like a, like a thimble <laughs> on your finger, so you, a sewing needle, like, you know, that little Monopoly thing? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, yeah. I just want to tell y'all that this episode was brought to you by WAP. <laughs> So uh, any sexual expli- explicitness that you heard in this episode, blame Cardi B and Meg The Stallion. Okay, Facts. I want to be I want to be as sexually free as Cardi B and Meg The Goddamn Stallion. And I'm gonna tell you something, man. Salute to Meg The Stallion, uh, calling out here calling men bottom feeders. Mm. I think that's a very derogatory term for an ass eater. Why? And um, I think it's a slur. I think bottom feeder is a slur. Uh, really? But I'm gonna tell you something. I ate so much goddamn ass on Saturday. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm really? not even gonna lie to you, bro. Talk to me about it. I was just eating. I was just. I, I just. I don't know. It was just something about. Even though she called us a bottom feeder, it was just something about hearing that in a record that kind of just like empowered me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? When Megan was like, "If he eat my ass, he's the bottom feeder." 
Like, damn, you you like it enough to give it a name? Mm. Even if you think it's a derogatory name or a slur. Still a name. It's like, yo, that's what's up. You know what I'm saying? Because we, we, we call ourselves Team Eat a Booty Gang. You know what I mean? I hope that you brothers out there is eating your wife's booties. I don't know what to tell y'all if you're not. You I'm not saying? doing not, that shit. It's nice. But you're not married yet. Though. You're right. You know what I'm saying? Once you get that ring, put that ring, you got to get that ring around the ass. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so it's just like, yo, if, you, if you're going to be a bottom feeder, be a bottom feeder with your wife. And um, yeah, I ate a lot of ass this weekend, bro. I'm not going to lie to you. What did you guys have for dinner Friday? <laughs> <laughs> was that, it was Saturday. Saturday was... No, but I want to know Friday because that's what you're going to taste on Saturday. <laughs> no. Yeah. 16-hour digestion cycle. So whatever you had well. Friday... You were tasting Saturday. I don't know what it tastes like, but I know that it's intoxicating. Really? And um, oh yeah. You love some ass. Like farts. I can smell it right now. Everything. Oh my Yo, god! Remember when they used to call you Boonky Nose? Boonky Nose. Technically, aren't you that now? Since you're you know what else they ass? used to call me? What? Boonky Dick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, they used to say god. they used to say hey. They used to call me Boonky Nose and Snuffleupagus. <laughs> so they would say hey, Boonky Nose, show me that Snuffleupagus dick. <laughs> That's what they used to say to me, and I'd be like, shit, Big Bird, what's the word? Stop and I would the, goddamn stop the podcast right now. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck off. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs> Listen, we as always, you. if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. If you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Peace, y'all. Wow.